For me, the fall is such an inspiring time of year. Orchards and gardens, well, they're just so full of produce and fruit. And this time of year, there's so many creative ways to put them to use. Favorites like apples, squash, eggplant, not only last a long time, but they're also very versatile. You see, you can prepare dishes with them in the kitchen, or you can use them to create seasonal designs in other rooms of the home. You see, fall provides ample opportunities to enjoy nature outdoors, and then easily transition that same beauty inside. That spirit of abundance also welcomes guests to your home. It's the perfect season to sit and visit over thoughtfully prepared food and discuss plans for the upcoming holidays. So let's get started enjoying this bountiful time of year. When fall begins to kick into gear, it's time to start thinking about harvesting your winter squash. Now, this is a squash that grows throughout the summer, but it's called a winter squash because it's a great squash for storing. You see, it has a hard outer skin that actually allows them to last throughout the fall and well into the winter months. Some of the varieties include butternut, acorn, as well as turban squash. So you may be asking yourself, how do you know when a winter squash is right? Well, it's back to the skin. It has to be really tough. You can take your nail and push into it like that. If it doesn't leave an indentation, well, it's probably ripe and ready to go ahead and bring inside. Now, one tip on harvesting winter squash, you don't wanna break the stem off the vine because you can tear the vine, which damages further growth. Um, also, if you pull the stem out, it opens up the squash to be more vulnerable, so it's likely to rot much faster. So I suggest taking just a pair of pruners and clipping the stems at about this length when you harvest. Now one way to get your winter squash to last longer is to cure it. Now this uh, tip refers to all winter squash except for acorn. What you wanna do is you wanna collect them and you want to keep them in a warm place that has good air circulation for about 10 to 14 days. And this cures them or hardens them off, and then it's time to store them for the winter. Now I have to say one of my favorite winter squashes is this one. It's the spaghetti squash. It's a great way to get the most out of your garden by producing some of your own noodles.
Coming up, a sweet tablescape using natural fall elements, and we'll take a trip that's both beautiful and delicious. Hey, you can't have a show about the fall harvest without focusing on the Thanksgiving feast. And you know what my favorite part is? It's the dessert, of course. Come on. You know, typically in a big meal like this, we wait till everybody's finished and then bring out the dessert. But I like to take a little different approach. I like to find a place for the desserts, a table like this, and elevate them on pedestals, as you can see here. Then it makes it very comfortable for the guests. They can come up, they can take a look at what the offerings are, they can take their time choosing what they like and pick out just the perfect dessert to finish off the meal. Now let's talk about the table for just a minute and how I've constructed it. You see, what I've done is I've used a neutral color here with this tablecloth, which has these boxed pleats, which I like very much. It gives a little more tailored look. And I've just placed this over a card table. So presto, I've got a beautiful place to set up the desserts. The other thing that's nice about this is that this is machine washable. So if anything gets spilled on it, hey, just throw it in the washer, no problem. Now for the desserts themselves, I've simply placed a variety of serving dishes on the table to create differing heights for the desserts. I've also set up a second table for the plates, flatware, and coffee to make sure the dessert is the star of the show over here. So both of these locations, I've carried over the rustic look used on my dining table with fresh greenery and other natural elements. And using accent colors like eggplant and green will give your fall table a non-traditional look. So this year, give your desserts a special place. Your friends and family will love you for it. And if you're interested in some delicious pie recipes, you might take a road trip, enjoy the beautiful fall foliage, and check out the Arkansas Pie Trail. One of the things I enjoy when I travel is the food. I like to get on a theme and follow it. That's what we're doing today. We're on the pie trail. We're traveling around the state of Arkansas where there's some delicious pies and some very talented bakers and pie makers. We're at the wagon wheel. Let's step in and let's see what they've got. Amazing. This is called banana split pie. Have you ever heard of anything so decadent? This is a journey of the senses. We're about to head up Highway 65 and we're gonna see some spectacular foliage and taste some unbelievable pies. So is the pie pretty good in here? Yes. You recommend it? I love it. You love it? You love it? Okay, should I have some? Okay, I'm gonna go. <laughs> this is the legendary strawberry pie. It's so good. I have meaningful work here. I'm gonna finish this piece of pie even though I'm running behind. I'll get to Gilbert in a little bit, but not until every crumb is eaten. Mm. So Ben, is the population of Gilbert really 13? 13 today. 13 today? 13 today. <laughs> I 
go through my mind and count everybody up and uh, <laughs> absolutely 13 to you don't have to worry about traffic jams in Gilbert Arkansas no today uh, the only traffic we're gonna have is dogs and cats <laughs> well there's a lot of enthusiasm for that river over there absolutely the Buffalo River is a is a natural draw for this town and and for the state in itself, uh, it's a lot of pluses. And for us, uh, especially here in Gilbert, who thrive on tourism mm, in itself. Sure, uh, yeah. Cabins, campground, restaurant here in town. We're so close to major cities, but yet far enough out in the woods that you can forget a lot of things. Mother Nature has blessed us here on the, mm. on the, on the river itself. The trees are drawing themselves. It's New, New England in the Ozarks. Mm, mm, it's splendid. So Ben, in this little piece of paradise, when, when would you consider the fall color to be at, at its peak? I, I would say any time in the month of October. Basically, mm -hmm. Mother Nature can give us a whole uh, different spectrum, but fall of the year is October through November be perfect. I have to say Gilbert's absolutely charming. I think it's because these, these old buildings, how old is the town of Gilbert? Well, Charles T. Gilbert came in, who brought the railroad in, uh, 1898. Yeah. It's an incorporated town, been incorporated since 1913. The store where we're sitting now has been here since 1901. Mm, it feels like it. <laughs> it does. It has all the qualities of a wonderful old building. Absolutely. Any suggestions on where I might go around here? I'm on a pie trail. Absolutely. I highly recommend, uh, on your way to St. Joe, stop at Big Springs Barbecue. Excellent right. pies in St. Joe. Very good. Thanks okay. for the lead. You're more than welcome. Real pleasure to be here again. Thank you, sir. Fantastic fall foliage and more delicious pies when Garden Style returns. I had a good apple pie. It was definitely delicious. Love that whipped cream. And Jennifer, when are you gonna share this pie crust recipe with me? Oh, I won't. Oh, come on. Mm, it's so good, thank, thank you. you. Now, I love fruit pies, and well, I love any kind of pie, but then there are nut pies, and I want you to try this black walnut pie in Jasper, Arkansas. My friend Janet does an awesome job but I'm gonna finish this first. Okay, so here's the butter. I think that's the last of our ingredients here. All right. Very good. You know, I love pie, just about any kind of pie you can name, I love. I really am excited about you sharing this recipe with me today. Oh, great. Well, we're using as many local ingredients as we can today. We're gonna to start out with our yard eggs. This is beautiful. These eggs are just great. Are they locally raised? Oh, yes. Everything. And our sorghum here is also a local farmer brings this in. We're using sorghum molasses, one half cup of sorghum and one half cup of organic brown rice syrup. Good. Three eggs. Well beaten. Yes. <laughs> and I'm using one third cup of brown sugar. Okay. Good. So I'm just kind of right now working out the lumps. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and add the one half cup of organic butter. Okay. And it looks like we have a little vanilla here. Yes. Just one teaspoon. Okay. You can go ahead and add it. Okay. I'm just going to kind of incorporate. And we do want to make sure that the butter isn't still sitting on top of your syrups or anything as we're getting it ready. So it is important to use the melted butter. But as you can see, it's coming together now and everything is adhering to mm -hmm. each other, but we don't want it to separate in the pie, and then the eggs last. Okay, eggs go in last. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Here we I'm go. I'm ready, yes. All right. They're all working together. Yes, and they will stick to each other. You just have to use a little mm -hmm. time. Everything has to be patient, but if I found that in baking, it makes all the difference between just a mediocre dessert and a mm. perfection dessert. So you can see now, everything mm -hmm. is thoroughly mixed. Um, I go ahead and put our one cup of black walnuts in our pie Oh, so shell. you put it in the pie shell. I do. And then I don't just dump this right in the middle. I go ahead and go around the edge. And then we will watch the 
walnuts emerge. They will just float to the top. You can see them, they're starting, the air is starting to leave. You can see around here, yeah, the nuts they're, are starting to are, top. But as the syrups melt and get warmer, everything will become thin and they will just easily rise to the top. And is it warm or room temperature? Room temperature. Room temperature. I have found on the um, walnut pie, the flavor is better. And it's just more uh, difficult to cut a warm pie of this nature. I start out cooking it at 425 for 15 minutes. I see. And then we turn the temperature down to 350 and cook it until there's a crack in the top. That's the best way <laughs> to tell. And so I set my timer usually for 20 minutes. I can see why this is a big favorite here. Oh yeah, it's our number one seller <laughs> I'll here. be making this at the farm. Okay, good, <laughs> good. Garden Style returns just after the break. Whether you hit the open road or harvest a beautiful bounty of vegetables, you're sure to enjoy the splendor of this season. So when the heat of summer finally lets up, get out there and enjoy the beautiful fall foliage, cooler temperatures, and all the bounty this season has to offer. For Garden Style, I'm Alan Smith. <laughs>